Okay, friends. So what's going on here? Um, it looks like there's one person, so hello. Uh, I'm going to have comments up on my second screen, but mostly I'm just going to be operating on my main screen. So what's going to happen here is I have a backlog of papers um, that I do want to read, and it's been piling up, and it's been stressing me out, and I figure that it's a long weekend in the U.S., and I might as well take that to blast through as many, as many of these as possible and just kind of catch up. I don't know how many, how many I get to, uh, probably just two or three. So it's just it these last three days of, of papers, really. Uh, and even that would be a success. And this is a really good podcast to, to read, not actually because uh, of the audio quality, but really because of the selection. The selection is really good. Um, so whoever's doing this is a guy named Rob. He doesn't really provide much info on um, who he is, because I would love to reach out to him and just find out more about what he does. It looks like he's just been doing this for years, um, and I don't know what his process is. Obviously, it's automated in terms of the auto generation, but I don't know what his process is. Anyway, he has a good selection of papers, and that's the most important thing, because then all I need to do is follow along. So what I'm doing now is I have this little audio thing and I'm listening along and I'm reading along the paper and I'll maybe comment uh, on some stuff. If you're, if you're familiar with the paper, feel free to chime on in. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of reading papers tonight and let's read them together, right? So the first one is prompt to model. Um, don't super know what the hell this is about. So, I think first thing I would want to check is if there's any sort of TLDRs out there. Uh, looks like there's some DMs today. Um, nothing, nothing interesting. Uh, nothing on prompt model. So, so this is weird because this is a paper that basically had no noise. Looks like Dare had some stuff here. Um, It's research OSS that combines the ease of prompting and the convenience of locally deployable models. From prompt, task restriction option examples, prompt to model, retrieve data, generate data, retrieve, retrieve pre chain model, output, deployment ready model. Um, and this, this looks like the lead author on Twitter. LMAPS that you build. NLP systems in seconds, just write a problem that you didn't reach. I guess most money had five to six. A new library prompt model turns a prompt into a small expert model that can match LM performance but runs locally. Um, prompt model trains small expert models just in the prompt input. Oh, oh, we read this. Okay, cool. Why should you care about prompt model? You can visit an NLP model, so you can say, oh, no, 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 no. new research, data set generation, model dissolution, and model data set retrieval. Now, do I fully understand this diagram? So it's a pretty long process. So because it, you put in a prompt, it retrieves data, generates data, retrieves a pre-trained model, and then it outputs a model that you can then use to do Q and A. Using your own models helps to resolve issues. So Model behavior, eval, some of the data. Uh huh. Uh, prompt to model and squad machine learning task. Uh, beats 3.5 on exact matches, which should be required. Uh, okay. Right. Interesting. He's a CMU professor, it looks like. He's a grad student at CMU, and he has had an undergrad as a PhD. Okay, cool. All right, uh, and then any other commentary that I should know about? Who's Graham Newbig? Okay, the last author. Associate Prof at CMU. Okay, probably the advisor. He looks pretty proud of what he's doing. It looks like there's a collab. Um, yeah. So I guess I should have caught up on this one in my August recap. But I'm just going to leave it be for now.
<clears throat> Top model names. Oh, you're retrieving from Hugging Face. Uh, top model names, which you were okay. Um, parse the prompts. Um, what is opening an instruction parser? like everyone's doing this retry loop thing. Uh, max API calls, click API call counter. I wonder if this could be, I mean, all of this is just commodity code, really. OK, so it's got instruction examples. OK, that's an open AI instruction parser. Got it. Now let's go down. What is task type? Task type, what's the task type? Uh, where do I use this task type? It's not used anywhere. Big fucking whoop. Retrieve and process data sets. Next, prompt to model searches for how data sets are hugging faces. Try to find training data sets that may be useful for your task. Okay, so it's. it's yeah, these guys really like to bootstrap up the hugging face. Uh, so it creates a search index. It's a top list of data sets. I'm not going to use any data sets. Entry data set name. Okay, so it doesn't actually create its own data set. It's just kind of pulling it off the shelf of something. So it's pretty limited um, to whatever some hugging face. In order to existing data sets of many different formats, but prompt model expects that the data set should have one input and one output, both of which are strings. In order to solve this, we do a canonicalization step. Uh, fuck. Where we convert the data set into a format that's compatible. Uh, the data set config names, and we choose one, we do data set, load data set. Uh-huh, generate data set. Canonicalize data sets using columns. All right, what the hell is this thing? Do, 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 
as expected, is an F-string framework. Well done, friends. Well done. All right. Then we fine tune the model. Wait. So we generate the exam some examples for training the model. We use OpenAI dataset generator. What the fuck is this thing? What are these academics like to hide things from us? It's an abstract class for NLP data set generation using OVO 5. Huh. I think this is pretty useful. You could use this uh, in a bunch of stuff. This is actually interesting. They say someday we'll leave us all behind. So live a life you will remember. My mama told me when I was just a child, the other days you never got. Do 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 Ideally, each input should have a unique output. However, language models may occasionally generate different outputs for identical inputs. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We'll to, address, to address this opening data set, generator uses a two step multiple filtering system. The function represents the first step, creating a dictionary to map inputs to the counter of their outputs. Function iterates over all the examples in the dictionary where input service keys and non counter service values. Counter tracks you can see for each of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Apply multi volt to construct, generate the data set. This method uses multivolt filtering to create a unique mapping from inputs to outputs. The input column of generated data sets contains unique inputs, but the output column holds the shortest, most frequent output for the corresponding input. Okay, so this is just kind of extracting the top. Uh -huh. Create all examples data set and generate data set. Uh, okay, examples, examples, and compute batch size. Computes the batch size for opening the AI calls in a batch. Batch size determines the number of the reading numbers, the examples to be generated, and it'll be so, That's nice. Oh, fancy guys, fancy. Hey, James. Hello from Ohio. You are up very late then because it is 1 a.m. my time. Um, so this is fancy, uh, being able to calculate batch size based on if max API calls are not set, make sure you put it into batch size, batch size equals min of max batch size, math dot ceiling of, uh, this is just one thing, expected number of examples minus length of generated data set. Divided by self dot responses for request. Okay, that's not too bad. Finally, I think we have extracted responses. <clears throat> this function iterates through provided completions, attempting to generate JSON object, and completions. JSON not loads. I feel like this is outdated because you could just kind of use the, the function calling API. Uh, when did they write this? Hey, Jim. Uh, we are reading today uh, prompt to model, uh, model generating uh, data. And then I went on a little bit of a tangent, just diving straight into code. I haven't even read the paper yet. 
but um, it was apparently one of the top papers of last week. So I figured I would just read it, show you how I read stuff, explore my curiosity, put it on stream, talk to you guys because I'm it's one a.m. and there's not that gonna, there's not going to be that many people awake in the world today right now as we speak, and that's just fun to be awake together, especially when it's late at night. Late at night. Dynamic temperature. What the? The temperature for generating the response is dynamically just based on the size of the generated data set. As the data set grows, the temperature generally increases in volume max temperature. What? Wow. Generate data set split. This method iteratively makes API calls. The JP 3.5 is generated data set split. Each API call uses a batch of responses. From these responses, new examples are extracted and generated. Uh -huh. I mean, this is a this is solid engineering work to, to make it like reliable and do what you want. Um, that's a good 700 lines of code right there. Not bad. Okay, that's data set generator, a lot more value than the other stuff. Then we go into fine tuning the model um, to do so. We first combine the retrieved data set with the generated data set and grab our train validation and testing splits. Very, very common. Uh, yep, cool. And then combine the retrieved data set with the generated data set and use the mod generation model trainer to fine tune and retrieve model. All right, what the hell is this thing? Uh huh. Trainer for T5 type, encoder decoder model, and GPT type decoder only model. There's a little typo in there. Um, there's a trainer. There's a bunch of standard boilerplate stuff. Stuff from Transformers Library. Uh -huh. Left padding, right padding, tokenizing data set. So there's a little tokenize. You think a lot of this is by the play code, which is nice. Da, 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 da. Not bad, 400 lines of code for um, a fine-tuning thing that can split between T5 and GPT. Okay. Um, training output, train and train model. All right. Safety trained. Now I can try it out and evaluate the model. Oh, they have an evaluator. Look at you. So fancy. Yeah, these guys are these guys put a lot of work into this paper. Model executor for T5 GG type models, generator, blah blah blah, attention mass. So generation beam search, okay. Oh, I got some questions from Jim. On average, how many hours do you devote to reading implementing papers? Uh, zero to implementing. Um, I would say I, I, the most I do is kind of run the code if I'm super interested in it. 
um, but it would take way too long to implement them. Um, I would love to, because obviously that's where you learn the most and you, that's where you get to call bullshit on some papers, but there's just absolutely no way that I can fit that in my life right now. Reading papers, I would say a few hours a week. Um, we have a paper club that we do here that we do one hour a week for and probably sh probably take, takes another hour of prep, so that's two hours. And then just on my own, like w anything that comes up to in, in my social circles as interesting papers uh, probably gets another two to four hours. So not a ton of time, like six hours at best. And I don't know. I think I've been thinking about like, making this more formal, like two hours a day. Uh, honestly, I think like is a good amount of time for both catching up on papers that I might have missed in the past and then reading current papers that are newer. Um, Cause you kind of want to have that barbell approach of like super old, super new um, for foundations plus news. Um, I don't know if I can commit to two hours every single day, but that, that's the sheer amount of volume of stuff that is out there. And I do think like, if you want to get up to speed in a reasonable amount of time, you have to kind of make that commitment. Have I come across a white YouTube channel of this guy, Hupo, whose content is focused exclusively around reading AI papers and jargons? No. So I'll check out youtube.com slash hu dash po. Um, cool. Streaming two hours of stuff. What is our Jeff? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't. So. The stuff that turns me off is stuff like this, which is clearly not even in the same domain. Um, where, but Code Llama is good. Um, I don't know what this instruction back translation thing is. Meta GPT is good, so I'll, I'll kind of queue that up. I have to queue, I guess, so watch later. Um, and then. Quantum, so anything that bombastic, I just don't do. Uh, Code Llama is fine, so I'll do that. Uh, Beyonce, what is, oh, okay, speech to speech, what is RLHF? Okay, I'll do that. Uh, so I'll, I'll just like roughly have a my own meter of like what to skip, because um, not everything is worth covering based on my own personal priority list, I guess. Uh, I think that's it. So it looks like he's still pretty new at this. And that's fine. Uh, gets a little subscribe for me. Thanks, Joe. All right. Uh, so Marie, providing a question. Do you still invest in digital startups? How do you manage all these things in your personal life? Uh, a, you don't have a personal life. It's not entirely true. I, I have had a very fun weekend uh, with a couple of friends. Um, and didn't work, which is very fun. Um, do I still do this with SARS? Basically, if my friends are like raising, then yes, but it's like very passively, right? I don't even like publicly identify as an investor, but um, I do invest in a whole bunch of startups. Um, I, I should probably put up a list. I have about 30 startups now that I invest in. Um, here's, a, here's a little sense of like this, the kind of note taking that I do. Um, I don't think it show you much. But I can show you um, the amount of meetings that I do for this, right? Each of these things have a date of meetings and stuff. Uh, and that's the first contact. Sometimes there's multiple follow-ups. So there's, there's, there's a decent amount of angel investing, I guess. Um, but it's all amount. It's all, it's all like people know of me and you know, just help them out. Cool. Um, yeah, you know, and, and again, um, I need to stress that I am not rich yet. Um, I did invest in the first like 10 out of my own pocket because I thought I was richer than I was. And then, uh, basically every startup that I've been, um, invested in every startup that I worked at where the stock used to mean something now no longer means much to me. So I have stopped investing out of my own pocket. Um, and I have a scout fund that I invest out of. So the money is not strictly mine out of my own pocket, but um, it's still very useful to, to help founders uh, in a material way. 
and honestly, I learned a lot, especially from the best founders, um, because they really inspire me as to like what you can do with your life. So that's that's good. What is okay? How do you eval? Uh, so now, now I'm 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 most of the way through this collab, which is the which is the core of the prompt model thing. I have not read the paper yet, but at least I know uh, to a to a very concrete level what exactly they mean by each of their terms. Because I'm looking at the code, there's no better source of truth than just looking at the damn code. Um, so. So we're all the way down at evaluate model, and they've basically hidden away all their code uh, into this little Python package. So it's just a little bit annoying because I have to go and read the source. And now they want to do a generation model executor. We load the model, uh, port it to a device. We get a model executor. Model executor makes a prediction on the test data set. Uh, sequence to sequence evaluator is initialized from here, uh, and then we evaluate model. So very, very opaque. I uh, don't know what that output actually looks like. We can actually go take a look at how it's implemented because it's open source. The generation model executor has a generate um, function and a make prediction function and a make single prediction function. So I think it's just a thin wrapper for just generate calls with a few different strategies, which is fine. Uh, I don't think we need to specify what the strategy is, which is cool. And then the evaluator evaluate model is the, is the, is the bulk of the thing. So let's actually go to there. I want to go to there. I want to go to there. Evaluate model. Where is the metrics defined? Defaults to using CR, CHRF exact match and BERT score. What is CHRF? The ground truth from data set, metric values, model input column is not bound. Data set. Okay, all right, all right, this is nothing. All right, fine. So what is CHRF? Exact match, I think I can guess. I can guess what the hell is CHRF? Oh, compute word order to score. Okay. Character ngram f score. Yeah, my app is way too slow. Okay. All right, so it computes similarity to a reference with word order two to calculate CHRF plus plus is still CHRF. Uh, and word order two probably makes it more, it actually lowers the score and it's not obvious to me. Uh, It's a weird comma there. Lowercase true, no nice all cases. Okay. Um, this is a cool formula, but I don't know why word order to what is word order to? Word order to word and gram order. Oh yeah, of course it's your lower score. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Um, because because now it's it's a lot harder to match. Uh, 
That's cool. I didn't know about CHRF score. That's cool. Okay, so a bunch of evals. That's great. Um, okay, so I think we're done with reading the code. Um, that was very on a, in the grand scheme of things, not too bad. Um, and then we shall move on to the second paper, and I think that's all I will have energy for today. All right, so we're reading prompt to model, and fun fact, I'm going to have this little thing, and it's going to read the paper to us. I'm going to skip a lot. I'm going to have it read really, really fast because I'm browsing, and we are now fairly familiar with what this model does. So let's go. Be prepared to step into the danger zone. Keeping you up to date with the latest research. This reading is brought to you by Mars Race. Stake a claim on the Red Planet. Available on Android and iOS. Prompt 2 model. Generating deployable models from natural language instructions. Author 2023 by Vijay Viswanathan, Chunyang Zhao, Amanda Birch, Tongshuang Sherry Wu, Graham Newbig. App can like the prompts provided to LLMs and uses it to train a special purpose model that is conducive to deployment. This is done through a multi-step process of retrieval of existing datasets and pre-trained models, dataset generation using LLMs, and supervised fine-tuning on these retrieved and generated datasets. Over three tasks, we demonstrate that given the same few shot prompt as input, prompt two model trains models that outperform the results of a strong LLM, GPT 3.5 turbo, by an average of 20% while being up to 700 times smaller. We also show that this data can be used to attain reliable performance estimates of model performance, enabling model developers to assess model reliability before deployment. Prompt two model is available open source at https colon slash slash github. Com, new lab, prompt two model, one, one. Introduction. Traditionally, building an NLP model from scratch has been a substantial undertaking. An NLP practitioner seeking to solve a new problem would need to define their task scope, find or create data that specifies the intended system behavior, choose a suitable model architecture, train the model, assess its performance through evaluation, and then deploy it for real-world usage. Belize et al. 2022. LLMs like GPT-3, Brown et al. 2020. Blue et al. 2023b. Offer a lighter weight paradigm for NLP system construction through prompting Reynolds and McDonald. 2021. Practitioners can now write a prompt specifying the intended system behavior, optionally with a few demonstrations, and ask an LLM to generate a desired output via text completion. This makes it possible to prototype NLP systems rapidly for a variety of applications without writing a single line of code. Florida and Shariati, 2020. However, there's still a gap between proof of concept prototyping, showing LLMs can be prompted for a particular task, and practical deployment. Prompting LLMs can be expensive as they require either a significant amount of computing or access to commercial APIs, and their reliance on the input prompt quality makes them unstable compared to trained models, min et al. 2022, Lubeck et al. 2023. Because practitioners usually do not have enough annotated validation data to measure their system performance, it is also more challenging for them to debug their systems before deployment, Zhang et al. 2022. Additionally, LLM prompted systems pose usability challenges. Practitioners have expressed concerns about the high serving costs and slow prediction time associated with using LLMs, Park et al. 2022, and those working in high stakes domains cannot rely on commercial LLM APIs due to privacy concerns. For instance, sharing user data with LLM service providers is illegal for many applications in the US, says Ginn et al. 2022. In this work, we present Prompt 2 model, a system that retains the ability to specify system behavior in a lightweight way through prompting, while still resulting in a deployable special purpose model, maintaining all the advantages thereof. Prompt 2 model is designed as an automated pipeline that extracts essential task information from users' prompts and then automatically collects and synthesizes task specific knowledge through three channels. Dataset retrieval. Whenever possible, we collect training data by retrieving task relevant annotated data, Farber and Lysinger, 2021, this one often at all, 2023. Dataset generation. We distill knowledge from an LLM teacher model by employing it to generate a pseudo labeled dataset. Prior work has demonstrated that such a dataset can be used to train a smaller student model to emulate the behavior of the teacher model, Wong et al., 2021, he et al., 2023, Gutabande et al., 2023. Model retrieval. Based on the prompt, we identify a pre-trained language model whose parametric knowledge is appropriate for the user's intent. This chosen model serves as a student model and is further fine-tuned and evaluated using the generated and retrieved data. Prompt 2 model is designed to support different instantiations of each of these components. We provide a reference implementation where we demonstrate its utility with a GPT 3.5 turbo-based dataset generator, a dataset retriever based on data finder, this one often at all, 2023, and a model retriever using BM.5. We evaluate on three tasks covering both traditional NLP benchmarks and model applications and find that, empirically, Prompt 2 models sometimes produce small models that outperform GPT 3.5 turbo when using the same prompt as input. On two of these three tasks, we observe greater than 20-point improvements over the GPT 3.5 turbo baseline, despite the final model produced by Prompt 2 model being up to 700 times smaller. We also find that we can generate effective evaluation datasets. Performance improvements on these synthetic clones of real benchmarks also hold on their real counterparts. We believe that Prompt 2 model can serve the following purposes for the community. One, a tool for quickly building small and competent NLP systems. Prompt 2 model can be directly used to produce task-specific models that outperform LLMs in a few hours without any manual data annotation or architecture design. The method bridges the gap between the proof of concept LLM prototyping and the practical deployment of the model. Two, a testbed for end-to-end -end prompt-based model training. Given Prompt 2 model's extensible design, it can offer a platform for exploring new techniques in model distillation, dataset generation, synthetic evaluation, dataset retrieval, and model retrieval. Our platform allows studying these components using extrinsic downstream metrics, enabling empirical progress on these research areas. Two Prompt 2 model framework our system. Prompt 2 model provides a platform to automate the components of a machine learning pipeline, data collection, model training, evaluation, and deployment. We illustrate our automated pipeline in Figure 2. At the core is our automatic data collection system, which leverages dataset retrieval and LLM-based dataset generation to obtain labeled data relevant to the user's needs. We then retrieve pre-trained models, which we fine-tune on the training splits of the collected datasets. Finally, we evaluate our trained models on the test splits of the same datasets and optionally create a web UI that can be used to interact with the model. Our general purpose method is designed to be modular and extensible. Each component can be implemented differently or disabled by a practitioner. We give an overview of our framework. Then in Section 3, we describe our reference implementation. Prompt parser is the primary input to our system. Users provide prompts similar to those used for LLMs. These prompts comprise an instruction and, optionally, a few demonstrations of the anticipated behavior. While this open-ended interface is convenient for users, end-to-end -end ML pipelines may benefit from a prompt parser that processes this input, such as segmenting the prompt into an instruction and individual demonstrations or translating instructions into English. Dataset retriever given a prompt, we first try to discover existing manually annotated data that can support a user's task description. There are several design decisions for the dataset retriever. One, what datasets to search against. Two, how to index datasets for search. Three, which dataset columns are needed for the user's task and which columns should be ignored. Prior works by Farber and Lysinger, 2021, and this one often at all, 2023, introduced systems for dataset search. We use the latter, called DataFinder, in our implementation, as described in section 3.2. Dataset generator, not all conceivable tasks have any existing annotated. FYI, he's quoting himself a lot. Uh, this is the lead author, again, of this exact same paper. So he's stacking up his mentions. 
Um, so far, I think not a surprise based on what we've seen so far. I think I was initially not impressed. And then I think I got more impressed over time. I like that um, they had some results about 20 point improvements uh, and then 700 times smaller. Uh, so obviously that is a worthwhile. Um, I have concerns about how domain specific it is um, because obviously you're extremely constrained to whatever's in Hugging Face. Uh, they don't they don't label that the hugging the data set is from hugging face, but we know that because we've looked at it. And then the data set generator, um, that's fine, that's from GPT GPT. Um, I like the auto eval thing that they have. That's that's legit, that's pretty cool. That needs to be a better known technique, I think. Um and then he's he's talk he's plugging his thing called Data Finder, which I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, probably another paper of his uh, scientific data set recommendation from Natural Language Description. With the Data Finder data set from seventeen point five k queries. And yeah, <clears throat> this sort of thing where he's you know just aggressively quoting his own work and. Uh, <coughs> There's a high risk of not of failing to generalize, but who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, it's, an, it's an interesting technique. And not all conceivable tasks have any existing annotated data, and many tasks are only somewhat relevant to an existing data set. To support a wide range of tasks, we introduce a data set generator to produce synthetic training data as per the user-specific requirements parsed by the prompt parser. This component presents challenges related to cost efficiency, generation speed, example diversity, and quality control. We discuss our suggested solution to these challenges in section 3.3. Model retriever besides training data, we must identify an appropriate model to fine-tune. We cast this as a retrieval problem, where each model is represented by user-generated descriptions and metadata such as popularity or task supported. The reference implementation of our model retriever, described in section 3.4, searches against pre-trained models on Hugging Face, Wolf et al. 2020, but this could instead cover other model repositories such as Model Zoo, Co. 2020. Training given retrieved and generated datasets in a pre-trained model, we use a model trainer to fine-tune the model on a subset of the data. We currently train models by treating all tasks as text-to-text -text generation, Raffle et al. 2020, as described in section 3.5, but emphasize that this component can be extended in the future to support new approaches. Evaluation after training models on a portion of the retrieved and generated datasets, we give the remaining data to a model evaluator module. We aim to support a variety of tasks, and selecting the correct task-specific metrics for an arbitrary task is a difficult problem. We describe our suggested strategies for task agnostic evaluation in section 3.6. Web app creation to enable developers to expose a model to collaborators or users. We include an optional component called the demo creator to create a graphical interface to interact with the model. We briefly describe our implementation of this component in section 3.7. Three reference implementation prompt two model is designed modularly to support customization of each component in our framework, described in section two, but we have provided a reference implementation to enable immediate adoption. 3.1. Prompt parser. We parse the prompt into instruction and demonstrations fields, shown in figure two, where the instruction represents the primary task or objective and the demonstrations exemplify the desired behavior. To achieve this, we utilize an LLM within context learning to segment user prompts, employing the OpenAI GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613 in our experiments. If the instruction provided is identified to be in a language other than English, we translate it to English using the DLAPI. 2. 3.2. Two. Data set. Oh, they mentioned the demo creator, but I didn't, I didn't see that there was a video here. Um, so it's scanning through some data sets. It's retrieving data sets, I guess. And that's the, that's the plug from his previous paper. Uh, enter your task description. There you go. Okay, so that's a fairly long task, task description. Your task is generally answered to a natural question. Okay. Jakarta Research, Indo QA. The fuck are some of these data sets, man? Daily dialogue, that's cool. Like eval math. Sure. If none of these are relevant to your prompt, we only use generally. Yes, yes. Which data set would you like to use? Give a number between 1 and 25, 24 CBT children's book test. Oh, so this wasn't automatically selected. Uh, multiple data set configs available. Raw, V, P, E, N, E, C, N, and C, N. Found cache data set CBT, um, blah, 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 CN, load a data set, example row, and sentences, blah, apply uh, to X, blah, options, access to screen, and the answer is screen. So, okay, so here's an example of like the exam. Um, okay. Uh -huh. And then you're supposed to fill in the XXX. 
That's amazing. Which column should we use as input? Provide a column summary to list. Uh, I see. So there's a fair amount of guidance from this, but it's not too bad. So, so you type in question, comma, sentences. Okay. Use the input. Which you use as the target? Answer. Duh. Uh, okay. So this shows the format here of the single question. Very well done. Retrieve the model. Building an IDF TF IDF matrix. I mean, look, it's always going to retrieve flan T5. I don't know in what situation it was not going to retrieve flan T5. Bruh. Your input instruction, your task engineering, and your question. Okay. Enter the number of examples we should generate. 5,000 examples. Start a model trainer. The timestamp is August 6, 2212. Data set generator loading cache. Oh, it's already cached. Uh, Flan T5 is a very well known model. Uh, T5 was a model out of Google that was one of the original text to text transformer models um, that came out of Google after they invented the transformer. And then Flan is the instruction tune data set on top of T5. So Flan T5 is essentially was the best language, uh, open source language model before GPT 2 or three, something like that. I don't know the exact chronology, um, but still regarded as, as very, very highly, uh, highly valuable and well understood now because it's so old. Um, into the training batch size, into the number of epochs to train for starting a train. Oh, 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 oh. Starting a train. Okay, so it's so it's training. Uh, you know, increase, tokenize, or max length. Number example 6,000, which is cash, so they cheated a little bit there. Total optimization steps 18,000. Number of trainable parameters is 247 million. So it's smaller, but still large language model. Um, tokenizer, okay, cool. Um, so this ran at eight. At um, We saw some timestamps. So this was at 20, 22, 12. Let's see how long it took them. 22, 15. So only three minutes. Hey, it's not too bad. Uh, maybe six minutes. That's not too bad at all, friends. It's not too bad. I like it. HP 2020. Uh, model open source by decoder. Very good. Fancy five, you have encoder and decoder. Um, Yes, mechanically, yeah, right. So, uh, all right, history lesson, um, or I don't know. This is something we have covered, and uh, I will confess that I still don't uh, fully understand why, when you want to use encoder, decoder versus decoder only. Um, obviously, decoder only optimizes for the token generation use case, but what do you lose by dropping the encoder? I don't know. Um, but just so people have this in their head, encoder and then decoder, right? Um, and then decoder only architecture just kind of uh, optimizes for this. Um, so yeah. Um, what else can I say about this? Uh, encoder, decoder. Versus decoder only. Yeah, it's a very common topic. Uh, I would say if you want more charts, I think that might help a little bit. But that was a, a big transition from the uh, early Transformers models to the modern ones that are decoder only. Um, here we go. Look at that. Encoder only, encoder, decoder only. That's not exactly what I was talking about, dude. Uh, Decoder, decoder versus decoder only. Um, let's see what this says to us here. Encoder only was Bert and Bart. Encoder, decoder was T5. 
Makes sense. And then decoder only was more general. That's kind of cool. That's a good chart here. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, read this in more detail. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Um, all right, let's try and finish this paper, yeah? Um, what was my hang up? Oh, I was going through the model. Okay, so I have 15 seconds left on this thing. So they pulled up their Gradio with the interactive demo. They ran the model evaluator. Um, the model evaluator said CHRF was 62.9, exact match was 0.65, average birth score was 0.95. Okay. And then the grand radio where you can actually ask your questions. Tiao. What is Tiao? I don't understand. All right. Cool. All right. Tips and examples to write a good prompts. Very cool. Uh, it looks like they probably have very prompts, very extensive prompt examples. Yeah. No, not a big surprise here. Oh, so maybe they um, they want to pull off other language models if they if they want to do other languages, which is kind of cool. All right, that's a use case for non flat T five. All right, back to playing through the paper. Data set retriever to retrieve data sets for a prompt. We adapt the data finder system introduced by this one often at all. Twenty twenty three. By extracting user-generated data set descriptions for each data set and hugging face data sets, lowest at all. 2021, we utilize data finders trained by encoder retriever to rank the most relevant data sets. Once a relevant data set is identified, the next step is to determine which columns of the data set correspond to the input and the desired output specified by the user. As automatically inducing the correct schema for any data set can be challenging, we adopt the human in the loop approach. We present the top K data sets, where K equals 25 by default, to the user and allow them to either select the most relevant data set or to state that none are a good fit for their task. We then ask the user to identify the appropriate columns for input. So we saw that in a demo video with, uh, with the choices uh, in there. Somewhere in here. Yeah. Kind of laborious, but not the worst thing. Appropriate columns for input and output from the dataset schema. 3.3, dataset generator. We carefully engineered our dataset generator to enable speed optimized generation at a low cost while creating diverse and high quality examples. Our strategy comprises the following components. High diversity few shot, prompting we use automated prompt engineering to generate a diverse dataset. We augment the user provided demonstration examples with a random sample of previously generated examples to promote diversity and avoid generating duplicate examples. Without this strategy, 120 out of 200 generated QA examples were duplicates. With it, only 25 were duplicates. Temperature annealing, we adjust the sampling temperature from low, favoring deterministic outputs to high, encouraging diverse exploration proportionally to the number of examples already generated. This modulation helps preserve output quality while gradually encouraging diversity. Self-consistency decoding, given that LLM may generate non-unique or incorrect outputs for the same inputs, we use self-consistency filtering, long at all. 2022, to select suitable. You like jazz. Your passenger likes country. You settle on blues. This is the only kind of compromise. In the most frequent answer, in the case of ties, we heuristically select the shortest answer. This promotes accuracy of the generated data set while ensuring unique examples. Asynchronous batching API requests are parallelized using Xeno Build, Nubik, and Key. 2023. We use additional mechanisms, such as dynamic batch size and throttling, to optimize API usage. 3.4. Model retriever. We need to select an appropriate model to fine tune to support many tasks with a unified model interface. We presently limit ourselves to encoder decoder architectures on Hugging Face, Wolf et al. 2020, following recent work that shows that encoder decoder models are more data efficient for model distillation, Calderon et al. 2023. This restriction still leaves a large set of pre trained models to choose from, e.g., Salesforce Code 5 based for coding related tasks, Wong et al. 2021b, or Mari I. Oh. This is an important uh, paper then. <clears throat> um, one unhappy fact of paper reading is that. Any good paper is going to have five other papers that you should read spawning out of it, and there's no way you you finish uh, that. But um, I wonder if there's some big takeaway uh, figure that I can use to summarize all this. Mm, probably not. Mount AR and fine-tuned AR to end for Arabic to English translation. Tiedman and Vladimir, 2020. We frame the problem of selecting a pre-trained model as a search problem. Using the user's instruction as a query, we search against all textual descriptions of models on Hugging Face. This search task is challenging because Hugging Face model descriptions are sparse and contain lots of templated text, often with only a few words that signify the content of the model. 
To address this, we follow the Hive framework, now at all, 2023, and first use GPT 3.5 Turbo to create a hypothetical model description given the user's instructions. We show an example of a hypothetical document generated for question answering instruction in Figure 3. Using this description as an expanded query, we then apply the BM25 algorithm to compute query model similarity scores, Robertson et al., 1995. To ensure the ease of deployment of the resulting model, we filter out models whose size in bytes exceeds a user-specified threshold set to 3 gigabytes by default. Using the intuition that highly downloaded models are more likely to be high in quality, we choose the top model after ranking by BM25, query, model, log, hash of downloads plus 1, 3.5, training, dataset process. Okay, this is a lib this is a lot of cheating. Uh, first, you filter out the the anything above three gigs. Um, this is legit. I mean, this is this is fine. Uh, using the highly downloaded models, then this is this is the bulk of the signal, dude. Come on, BM twenty five log minus log number of downloads plus one. So log number of downloads um, times BM twenty five. So BM twenty okay, oh, model. Okay, I think what is the range of BM twenty five? Best match twenty five. Don't, don't let me be the last to know. Don't go back. Just let it go. I need to be insane. Okay, makes sense. Yep. Dataset processing, we train the model by leveraging two datasets, one generated and one retrieved. To sidestep the challenge of making schema-specific modeling decisions, e.g. constructing specialized architectures for classification or generation tasks, we treat all datasets as text-to-text -text problems, raffle et al., 2020. We textualize the input columns of each dataset and prepend the user's instructions to the input to guide the model. Fine-tuning, we concatenate the retrieved and generated datasets and shuffle them before training the student model. We use the same default hyperparameters for all tasks. Three, we train with the Adam W. Optimizer. Concatenate the retrieve and shuffle them. That's hot. Is that what we want? What, what, on what basis do you do this? No citations whatsoever, just felt, felt like it. Adam W. Optimizer with LR equals 5v5 for three epics, which takes roughly one hour for all tasks. 3.6. Evaluation. Our model evaluator automatically evaluates models for all tasks using three general purpose metrics. Exact match, CHRF++, Popovic, 2015, and Bird Score, John L. 2019, CHRF++ balances precision and recall to assess text generation quality. Exact match measures how often. So that's cool. CHRF actually has a paper, so it's worth reading it. Um... I mean, I think I think we like already by by doing the research that we did, we already understood it. But um, it's sometimes useful to just do a quick once over on the on the on the, the 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 source paper in case there's anything like really iconic that you should know that everybody in 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 the field already knows. Um, uses engrams. It's great. Conclusions. Oh, look at this! this is a four-page paper. What so based? Uh, okay, so uh, it enforces character level engrams, engrams f scores, human judgments, clearly up. Uh, fair enough. CHRF, well done. Um, exact match measures how often the model output perfectly matches the exact reference. Bird score captures semantic similarities despite different wordings or phrasings by comparing the model output and reference in the embedding space. We use XLMR, Kano et al., 2020, as the encoder for Bird score to support multilingual evaluation. 3.7, web app creation. We finally provide an optional step in prompt to model to automatically create a graphical user interface that allows downstream users to interact with the trained model. This web application, Bill, you Hey, this is Abu Bakar Abid uh, from Huggy Face. Built using Gradio, Abid et al., 2019, can then be easily deployed publicly on a server. Four. Experimental setup. Task is a proof of concept. We test our system's ability to learn a model for three tasks. Machine reading question answering. We first consider a common use case where pre-trained models and training data sets are plentiful. We use Squad, Raj Prakar et al., 2016, as ground truth to evaluate the setting. Japanese and code. Code generation from Japanese language queries is a challenging scenario where prior work exists but no annotated data or pre-trained models are available. We use MCONALA, Wong et al., 2023, for evaluation. Temporal expression normalization. We finally consider a task where there are no pre-trained models or training data sets of any kind available. Here we use the temporal data set of Wu et al., 2023, as ground truth for evaluation. 
Though prone to model offers automated model evaluation on generated and retrieved data sets, we use real benchmark data sets here to measure our pipeline's ability to train accurate models. LLM baseline, a primary goal of our work, is to train small models that can match or outperform LLMs. To measure success towards this goal, we report the performance of GPT 3.5 Turbo on each benchmark. We provide GPT 3.5 Turbo 4 the same instruction and demonstrations provided to Prompt 2 model for fair comparison. 5. Experiment results. 5.1 downstream performance. How effective is Prompt 2 model in producing a high quality model? In Table 1, we evaluated models produced by Prompt 2 model, as well as our baseline LLM GPT 3.5 Turbo. All right, so it looks like there's some new folks here. Um, Shagan asks, what is this reading extension? It is not a reading extension. I explained uh, at the start of this video. Um, we are using the curation efforts of papers read on AI, uh, which is kind of this thing here. Um, and, and this is delivered as a podcast, which I'm playing um, physically. Uh, so I have this podcast that's being played right now on my phone. And then I have a little speaker in here. So this is the podcast. Um, and this is this is it. Uh, the curation is just very, very good. Uh, whoever's running this, Rob, if you're out there, you're doing an amazing job. I wish I could talk to you because I have no idea how to get in touch with you. Uh, I'm playing it on my speaker. And then I'm kind of reading this along while I... While I read, uh, I find that it helps me absorb better because if someone's kind of reading it out to me and probably makes for a better stream because then I can provide audio. Um, I am playing it at 2x, which is not advised, of course, unless you also have the visual on the actual um, paper itself and you can have the ability to pause at any time. So that's the TLDR. James says, is video popular for ML projects? Uh, um, there is a battle between Streamlit and Gradio, and uh, the Hugging Face Hugging Face acquired Gradio, so they definitely prefer Gradio, especially for Hugging Face spaces. But I would say that most practitioners that I talk to that want to put up a UI in production tend to pick uh, Streamlit from Snowflake. Our baseline LLM GPT 3.5 Turbo on real benchmark data sets for each task, squad, MCO, and ALA, and temporal. We further examine the effect of removing two specific elements of the Prompt 2 model pipeline, model retrieval, and data set retrieval. On two of three data sets, we find that Prompt 2 model produces models that are considerably more accurate than GPT 3.5 Turbo. This is remarkable because the retrieved model for squad and temporal is Font 5 which at 250M parameters is up to 700 times smaller than GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is believed to contain 175B parameters. We observe that Prompt 2. So this is almost certainly not true. Uh, GPT 3 had 175B parameters, GPT 3.5 turbo. The turbo is an indication that it's uh, meant to be a lot faster and probably smaller. Two models performance on Kao's Japanese to Python task is significantly worse than GPT 3.5 turbo. One explanation for this is the relatively low diversity in the generated data set of Japanese queries. 45. Oh shit, it failed. Well done, well done guys. You uh, included an example where you did poorly. 45 of 5,000 examples are different ways of saying, find the maximum value in a list of numbers. We do not observe this level of redundancy in our other data sets, suggesting that GPT 3.5 Turbo may struggle to generate diverse text for non-English languages. Another reason is the lack of an appropriate student model. The models found by the model retriever were trained on either on multiple language or code, but not both. The resulting pre-trained models may lack the parametric knowledge to represent the Japanese inputs, Python outputs, or both. 5.2 combining retrieved and generated data sets is powerful ideally. Generated and retrieved data should be as close to the target domain as possible. In our experimental setting, where we deliberately choose prompts that mimic existing data sets, we can evaluate how well the model performs relative to a model trained on the same amount of data from the true data set. We use squad as a running example. Five is our prompt is a description of the squad passage level question answering task. Figure one, we exclude squad from our retrieved data list. Instead, we evaluate models fine-tuned on one, 3K examples from the closest retrieved data set, six, two, 3K examples generated by prompt two model three, the union of the above, which is what the full prompt two model pipeline uses for. 3K examples from squad, analogous to the user custom annotating data for a task. Table two shows the results across these four settings. While using retrieved or generated data causes a reduction in performance due to domain shift, a combination of the two methods achieves similar performance to using the true data set. For this machine reading comprehension task, where the user will need to custom annotate data for their task, prompt two model allows for similar performance at less than 1% of the cost. 5.3 are generated evaluation data to identify. Okay, so I think they're making a significant commentary here on the retrieval plus generation. Um, and I just love how they do these kinds of studies. So these tables actually make a lot of, uh, condense a lot of insight. Um, so here they talked about how on the Japanese translation task, they did very poorly compared to GPT 3.5, but then they did much better on squad and temporal uh, conveniently. I don't know why they chose a specific just exact match here and SHRF here and here. Uh, let's use a little bit of cherry picking. Uh, I do whatever. Um, and then uh, I like this one where it said the performance 
with R only was 56, performance if G only was 44, and R plus G was 61, which uh, was actually just on par with custom annotation, which is a lot more expensive. Uh, I don't understand why five is only 540 bucks to label 3,000 data points. That seems cheap. So I don't know. Um, Lost my page. Yeah, so prompt model allows for similar performance less than 1% of the cost. Um, that's the state of these papers, right? Like, they ran it on three things, uh, one and two of them, and then ran one study and then made some wild conclusion about, uh, <laughs> about what their method can do. Um, that's why I think you have to have a little bit of skepticism when taking the claims at face value because this is literally the, all the work they've done. Um, and when you test out of distribution, you should not be surprised if it does poorer than, um, than what is expected. What, what is this example? <laughs> what is, what, what? 100. Oh, so the squad paper had um, some essays and costs, which is kind of nice. And they just kind of reuse that. All right. At point three, our generated evaluation data to identify real modeling improvements, high quality generated data should also allow us to discriminate between multiple candidate models to select a model that will perform well downstream. We fine tune various models on a generated data set and rank their performance according to the generated test data and the test data from the target real data set. We evaluate the Kendall's rank correlation, Kendall, 1938, between the two rankings to determine if our generated data can effectively determine which models are. Is that the oldest paper ever? Holy shit. <laughs> Isn't it so, wait, what? 1938. Oh. Yeah. All right. I'm not. I'm just not gonna bother. Um, okay. Where you find? Maybe I am gonna bother. Rank correlation is interesting. I'm much more familiar with Spearman, um, but I did not know about. Rank. I love these kinds of formulas, man. They're just so simple, but um, they sort of reflect the structure of the underlying data much better all right um Kendall, 1938. data can effectively determine which models are likely to perform well downstream this is closely related to the concept of concurrence between benchmarks blue et al 2023a however we are evaluating whether the generated and real data rank specific models in the same ordering rather than modeling approaches table three shows the Kendall's tau for each task computed over a set of reasonable models eight the generated data shows strong correlation to the true performance on two of the three data sets Six discussion and conclusion, we propose prompt two model, a framework that automatically constructs task-specific models using only natural language prompts. Our proof of concept experiments show that, despite using similar easy-to-use interfaces LLMs, prompt two model delivers small yet accurate models and its generated data sets can be used to estimate real-world performance. Besides our reference implementation providing a ready-to-use tool, prompt two models extensible design and modular implementation makes it a platform for advancing model distillation, data set generation, synthetic evaluation, data set retrieval, and model retrieval. We believe our prompt two model framework can inspire various novel research questions. We hope that our platform enables future work that looks more deeply into quality assurance on the generated data and the model. Interesting questions include how much data should we generate for downstream model training and how diverse should it be? How do we effectively mix the retrieved and generated data sets such to achieve complementary strengths, e.g. using data set generation to focus on the expected inputs to the model that the retrieved data set fails to cover? Since users often struggle to articulate their needs up front, future extensions should also address the challenge of human in the loop correction, either by offering potential strategies to help humans iteratively refine prompts, or allowing humans to perform post hoc fixes when the task metadata extraction and generated data do not align with their intentions. We hope to propose explicit challenges and invite the community to contribute model implementations of various components in our framework. Limitations. One of the primary limitations of our system is that our current experiments have all been conducted using the GPT 3.5 Turbo API, used for prompt parsing, data set generation, and model retrieval. This LLM is paid and closed source, which makes this problematic as a scientific artifact. Rogers et al. 2023. Furthermore, the service provider of this LLM, OpenAI, prohibits the use of their API to create models that may compete with OpenAI, creating potential legal concerns with the use of prompt 2 model in commercial applications. We are exploring the integration of open source LLMs to avoid our reliance on proprietary APIs. Another limitation of our work is the limited ability of prompt 2 model to support tasks that require processing languages other than English. While we have shown the limitations of our system in supporting code generation from Japanese natural language queries, our system is likely to struggle more with lower resource languages. We use the unpublished GPT 3.5 Turbo model for our dataset generator and our reference implementation. 
This model is believed to be similar to GPT-3 for all 2020, which was trained on 93% English documents, 1% German documents, 1% French documents, and less than 5% documents in any other language. Our use of this model may exacerbate existing disparities in language technologies between high-resource languages and low-resource languages. One potential limitation is that we have only tested our approach on three tasks, each with a single data set and a single evaluation metric. We justify this decision because our focus is on providing an extensible software system rather than establishing state-of-the-art results on many data sets, but we believe that our results suggest broader applicability. Ethics statement, any system which makes powerful technology more accessible to the public has ethical implications. Witter et al. 2022, discuss ethical issues with open source packages in relation to software libraries for deep faking, including the possibility of enabling malicious actors to use technology that they would otherwise not have the technical skills to leverage. This is also a risk for an AutoML system such as Prompt2 model. However, we believe this risk is outweighed by the benefits of greater accessibility, especially given that a low barrier to entry for generating harmful data already exists in the form of Prompt2 web interface models. While Prompt2 model can, if given harmful inputs, generate toxic, offensive, or inaccurate synthetic data, this is no more of a risk with Prompt2 model than it is with the underlying Prompt2 model, Ender et al. 2021, indeed, the use of models in supplementary datasets retrieved from hugging face may lessen the likelihood of a downstream model replicating harms from the Prompt2 model's outputs, but more investigation is needed. Like all ML models, the models that Prompt. It's so cool that uh, whenever I can recognize a paper that I've read before, uh, because that, that was obviously the Sylvester Paris paper. Uh, Margaret Mitchell, Sh Mitchell. <laughs> um, they did a pod. I, I think Emily did a podcast about this, about the whole story behind the Stochastic Paris paper. It's very, very worth listening to. Take on the weights and biases podcast, uh, and that's Margaret Mitchell. The models that prompt two model returns can make mistakes, and we aim to be transparent in our documentation about potential limitations of the system. We hope that prompt two model will be broadly useful. Our work is motivated by a desire to increase the accessibility of NLP models to people who are not in the NLP community but would benefit from the community's innovations, particularly to people who will use NLP models downstream but may not have the domain specific knowledge to design their own system. Prompt two model may also prove useful for early NLP researchers by providing a starting point for intuitions about baselines for various tasks and enabling the discovery of similarities between the described tasks and existing work. We open source prompt two model and welcome community contributions. Acknowledgements. This work was supported in part by a fellowship from NEC research laboratories. We are grateful to Alex Cabrera, Will Everson, Nelson Liu, Arjun Ramani, Zerui Cheng, Zi Yuan Zhang, Tianqi Shui, Yanjin Liu, Yi Xin Hung, and Jilin Yang for their feedback and guidance. We particularly appreciate Zerui Cheng's video production support for our demo. Video production support for a one minute demo. Lol. <laughs> That's cool. That's great. That's a nice little 10 page paper that we fully, fully understood. And <laughs> okay, maybe not fully, but uh, you know, I, I like, I, I can answer questions on this uh, for if, if we need to. Good. Um, James has more questions. Why do you think they did not use an open source model like Lama for Meta? <laughs> Why do you think GPT is scoring very well and it's easy and it's, they have some credits or whatever? Um, they, they mentioned it as an extension at the end, but they're never going to do it. Like, there's no point. Lama is just not as good. Yeah. That's your, that's your answer. Okay, that's one paper down. Um, I think it's worth doing another one just to get a little more sample of uh, stuff and then also, I guess, feel more productive today. If large language models for code based on Llama 2 providing state of the art performance. So I, I happen to know that the, the next model is going to be about Llama 2, uh, Code Llama. And I know this is a big one. Um, so only 64 people like me listening to this podcast. You guys are fucking missing out. This podcast is great. Uh, okay, so I think my approach for this one, I am purely just going to read it because it's 47 pages. Uh, that's 54 minutes. If we read it at 2x, it's going to be half an hour. So... I can, that's, I think, what about I, what I can manage. So I think we just kind of read it from top to bottom and then comment along the way, and uh, that would be my approach to Code Lama. Cheers, friends. Let's go. Providing state-of-the-art performance among open models, infilling capabilities, support for large input contexts, and zero-shot instruction following ability for programming tasks. We provide multiple flavors to cover a wide range of applications, foundation models, Code Lama, Python specializations, Code Lama Python, and instruction following models, Code Lama Instruct, with 7B, 13B, and 34B parameters each. All models are trained on sequences of 16K tokens and show improvements on inputs with up to 100K tokens. 7B and 13B Code Llama and Code Llama Instruct variants support infilling based on surrounding content. Code Llama reaches state-of-the-art performance among open models on several code benchmarks, with scores above the 53% and 55% on human eval and MVPP, respectively. Notably, Code Llama Python 7B outperforms Llama 270B on human eval and MVPP, and all our models outperform every other publicly available model on multi-PLE. We release Code Llama under a permissive license that allows for both research and commercial use. 1. 1. Introduction. Large language models, LLMs, power a rapidly increasing number of applications, having reached a proficiency in natural language that allows them to be commanded and prompted to perform a variety of tasks. OpenAI, 2023, 2 Brown et al., 2023 b by utilizing large and domain datasets, their efficacy can be greatly improved for applications that require a combination of both natural and domain-specific language and understanding of specialized terminology. By training on domain-specific datasets, they have proved effective more broadly on applications that require advanced natural language understanding. A prominent use case is the formal interaction with computer systems, such as program synthesis for natural language specifications, code completion, debugging, and generating documentation for a survey. See Xu and Zhu, 2022, also see Section 5. In this work, we present Code Llama, a family of LLMs for code generation and infilling derived from Llama 2, 2 Brown et al., 
2023B and released under the same custom permissive license. We provide inference code for both completion and infilling models in the accompanying repository. One, our approach is based on gradually specializing in increasing the capabilities of Llama 2 models by applying a cascade of training and fine tuning steps. Figure 2, code training from foundation models. While most LLMs for code generation, such as AlphaCode, Lee et al., 2022, Encoder, Fry et al., 2023, or StarCoder, Lee et al., 2023, are trained on code only, Codex, Chen et al., 2021, was fine tuned from a general language model. We also start from a foundation model, Llama 2, 2 Run et al., 2023B, pre trained on general purpose text and code data. Our comparison, section 3.4.1, shows that initializing our model with Llama 2 outperforms the same architecture trained on code only for a given budget. Infilling, autoregressive training, and fine tuning of LLMs is suitable. LLMs is suitable for prompt completion, but does not provide the capability to fill a missing portion of text while taking the full surrounding context into account. Our code training for 7B and 13B code llama models features a multitask objective, Fried et al., 2023, consisting of both autoregressive and causal infilling prediction, enabling applications such as real-time completion in source code editors or doctrine generation. Similarly to the variant et al., 2022, Lee et al., 2023, our ablation study shows that infilling capabilities come at low cost in code generation performance for a given training compute budget, section 3.2. Long. This is so cool that they just kind of studied that uh, it's cheap to add infilling, so we'll just add infilling. Um, I mean, I think it should be obvious because of masking that infilling also matters. Um, we'll see the ablation study in session 3.2. Long input context, unlocking repository level reasoning for completion or synthesis, as opposed to function level or file level, requires prompting the model with much longer context than the 4096 tokens supported by Llama 2. We propose an additional fine tuning stage that extends the maximum context length from 4096 tokens to 100,000 tokens by modifying the parameters of the rope positional embeddings to suit all 2021 used in Llama 2. Our experiments show code Llama operating on very large contexts with a moderate impact on performances on standard coding benchmarks, section 3.3. Um, Thomas, you're not crazy. Um, look, I, yeah, I have some familiarity with the material, but also I think that having the visual aid and the audio, the audio is reflecting the speed of my reading. And I do have a fair amount of context. Uh, please feel free to ask questions and I can pause to explain what I think. So, yeah, I mean, I, I have some background, but I mean, I'm not a PhD and, I, you know, I'm just doing this reading on on my spare time. Um, and I don't think it's, there's that much to learn. There, there really isn't. Just challenge yourself to understand some of these terms and you're, you'll be fine. Section 3.3, instruction fine tuning. For end users, the utility of LLMs is significantly improved by instruction fine tuning. Liang et al., 2022, Wei et al., 2022, OpenAI, 2023, Tuvron et al., 2023B, which also helps preventing unsafe, toxic, or bias generate. By the way, so uh, if I had more time, um, this sentence, on additional fine tuning to take from 4,000 to 100,000 tokens by modifying Marius of Rope. Um, this is a paper I would immediately go read uh, because that's huge. Uh, I only know about Alibi. All right, so this is page two. This is Rope Former. I don't know what the fuck this is. Um, so that's that's where you sort of dig in and really earn your stripes because you're you're reading the papers that the people who wrote this paper read, um, and uh, okay, is there like a gist of something? Blah blah blah. So they introduce rope here. So how does this help you go to a hundred thousand? That does not make sense. I think. It's, so I was expecting the alibi paper, but this is just a rope paper. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this is like the wrong reference. I don't know. Toxic or bias generations. Code Llama instruct variants are further fine-tuned on a mix of proprietary instruction data for improved safety and healthiness, and a new machine generated self-instruct data set created by prompting Llama 2 for coding problems in Code Llama to generate associated unit tests and solutions. Our results show that Code Llama instruct significantly improves performance on various truthfulness, toxicity, and bias benchmarks at moderate cost in terms of code generation performance. Section 4. Different combinations of these approaches lead to a family of code specialized Llama 2 models with three main variants that we release in three sizes, 7B, 13B, and 34B parameters, Code Llama. A foundational model for code generation tasks, Code Llama Python. A version specialized for Python, Code Llama Instruct. A version fine-tuned with human instructions and self-instruct code synthesis data. An example of using Code Llama Instruct is given in Figure 1. It showcases that the model interprets natural language to determine suitable options for a command line program and provides an explanation of the solution. We provide further qualitative examples in Appendix K. We perform exhaustive evaluations of our models on major code generation benchmarks. Human eval, Chen et al., 2021, MVPP, Austin et al., 2021, and Apps, Hendrix et al., 2021, as well as a multilingual version of Human eval, Multi PLE, Cassano et al., 2023, where our best models establish a new state of the art amongst open source LLMs. The technical details of our training and fine tuning procedures are provided in Section 2, followed by in depth experiments and ablation studies, details of the safety, helpfulness evaluations, and a discussion of related work. 
2 code llama, specializing llama 2 for code 2.1, the code llama model is family code llama. The code llama models constitute foundation. Oh, I like the, that they uh, mentioned the number of tokens. So 500B base, that's interesting given that 500 divided by 34 is a ratio of 14, that's under chinchilla. 500 divided by seven is 71, that's over chinchilla but under llama. But they but llama already started with uh, a severe amount of overtraining. So llama two was trained in two trillion tokens and then they add 500B here, and then add 100B here, add 20B here, 20B here, add 5B here, uh, to get instruct. Cool. Code Lama models constitute foundation models for code generation. They come in three model sizes, 7B, 13B, and 34B parameters. The 7B and 13B models are trained using an infilling objective, section 2.3, and are appropriate to be used in an eye to complete code in the middle of the file, for example. Okay, it looks like we've already seen all this, so I'm just gonna skip it. For example, study the performance of models tailored to a single programming language compared to general purpose code generation models. Initialized from Llama 2 models and trained on 500B tokens from the code Llama dataset, code Llama Python models are further specialized on 100B tokens using a Python heavy dataset, section 2.2. All code Llama Python models are trained without infilling and subsequently fine tuned to handle long context, section 2.4. Code Llama Instruct. The code Llama Instruct models are based on code Llama and fine tuned with an additional approximately 5B tokens to better follow human instructions. More details on code Llama Instruct can be found in section 2.5. 2.2. Dataset. We train code Llama on 500B tokens during the initial phase, starting from the 7B, 13B, and 34B versions of Llama 2. As shown in Table 1, code Llama is trained predominantly on a near duplicated dataset of publicly available code. We also source 8% of our samples data from natural language datasets related to code. This dataset contains many discussions about code and code snippets included in natural language questions or answers. To help the model retain natural language understanding skills, we also sample a small proportion of our batches from it. By the way, they're not saying a damn thing about where these, this data is from. It could be Stack Overflow. They're just not saying it because of the implication portion of our batches from a natural language dataset. Data is tokenized via byte pair encoding, BPE, Cenric et al., 2016, employing the same tokenizer as Llama and Llama 2. Preliminary experiments suggested that adding batches sampled from our natural language dataset improves the performance of our models on MVPP. 2.3. Infilling. Code infilling is the task of predicting the missing part of the program given a surrounding context. Applications include code completion at the cursor's position in code eyes, type inference and generation of encode documentation, e.g., doc strings. We train infilling models following the concept of causal masking, Agajanian et al., 2022, Fried et al., 2023, where parts of the training sequence are moved to the end and the reordered sequence is predicted auto-aggressively. We train the general purpose 7B and 13B models with an infilling objective following the recommendations of Bavarian et al., 2022. More precisely, we split training documents at the character level into a prefix, a middle part and a suffix with a splitting location sampled independently from a uniform distribution over the document length. We apply this transformation with a probability of 0.9 into documents that are not cut across multiple model contexts only. We randomly format half of the splits in the prefix suffix middle, PSM, format, and the other half in the compatible suffix prefix middle, SPM, format, described in Bavarian et al., 2022, app, D. We extend Llama 2's tokenizer with four special tokens that mark the beginning of the prefix, the middle part of the suffix. Prefix, suffix, middle, and then suffix, prefix, middle. But why is middle not middle? That is because you're trying to predict middle. We extend Llama 2's tokenizer with four special tokens that mark the beginning, prefix, middle part, or the suffix at the end of the infinite span. To limit the distribution shift between auto regressive and infilling training, we suppress the implicit leading space that sentence piece tokenizers add upon encoding the middle part and <laughs> in SVM format, we can carry the prefix and the middle part before encoding two tokens. Because prefix and middle is actually a, a standard document, whereas suffix is not. So um, that concatenation takes care of a little bit more of the potential problems. Note that our model doesn't specifically have the ASP format, but it does appear to. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Um, results on the effects of infilling training on downstream generation tasks and the performance of the middle part of the suffix and the end of the infilling span. To limit the distribution shift between autoregressive and infilling training, we suppress the implicit leading space that sentence piece tokenizers. This is a major topic of research in transformer based language modeling, the Swanee et al., 2017. The fundamental modeling challenges are extrapolation, i.e., operating on sequence lengths beyond those seen at training time, and the quadratic complexity of attention passes which favors training on short to medium length inputs. For Code Llama, we propose a dedicated long context fine tuning LCFT, stage in which models are presented with sequences of 16,384 tokens, up from the 4,096 tokens used for Llama 2 in our initial code training stages. By limiting the training time spent on processing long sequences to a fine tuning stage, we gain long range capabilities without significantly increasing the cost of training our models. Our strategy is similar to the recently proposed fine tuning. Yo, that's. I did not know you could do that. So basically, Llama 2, go out to 4K, and then and then actually only do uh, long context in the subsequent version. 
Not bad. We propose fine tuning my position interpolation, Chen et al. 2023b, and we confirm the importance of modifying the rotation frequencies of the rotary position embedding used in the Lama 2 foundation models, Su et al. 2021. However, instead of downscaling frequencies literally as Chen et al. 2023b, we change the base period from which they are derived. Specifically, with rotary embeddings, the query and key vectors X and at position and are. Oh, I forgot to say something about how I want to do these sessions. Um, I think we should always tweet out uh, takeaways from every paper. So let me go do that right now for the previous one. <laughs> so those of you sticking around, you get to see how I tweet. Okay, so we'll do something like uh, just attribute the authors. These two look very just uh, red. Uh, uh, really red to this guy. Promise of uh, it, it's kind of the auto uh, if ML, ML had auto ML, this would be auto um, what the natural. Next step in automatic mount mm. engineering would be uh, find the Just kind of link to the model as well. Thank you. 
Um, the prompt to model repo includes a framework, Python framework published and maintained for you to use it. Interesting trends to in academia to ship software or maintain software as artifacts. Um, lots and lots to learn and pick up from. Well, I also have questions, share better concerns about the generalizability of this technique. All right, and then you grab some kind of picture, and then maybe annotate it a little bit like that. Then we add, uh, like this one, to I like this one. We talked about it in our stream. I think I'll just leave it there. You know, I could overthink it, but I just don't have the energy. All right, that's it. And that artifact, you know, um, in my mind makes it more concrete because I kind of process what I think and like what I call out. It makes me, helps me add future notes and then also just calls out the author for uh, sharing a really nice paper. So, okay. Uh, we are back to Cold Lama, and uh, I have more notes on this stuff. Uh, this one definitely will become a note. A query in G vectors xn at position n are subject to a linear transformation rd theta, nxn, where rd theta, n is a block diagonal matrix with entries of the form and d denotes the embedding dimension. Rotation frequencies are computed as theta i equals theta minus 2 i d, and we increase the base period theta from 10,000 to 1 million for fine tuning. This increase allows for processing much larger sequences and reduces bias toward short distance attention. See Appendix F.1 for further discussion. Our experiments confirm that code llama models are not only effective within the increased sequence length used during fine tuning, but further show extrapolation capabilities and exhibit stable behavior on very long sequences of up to 100,000 tokens. Section 3.3. 2.5 Instruction Fine Tuning Our Instruction Fine Tuning Models Code Llama instruct are based on code llama and trained to answer questions appropriately. They are trained on three different types of data. Proprietary data set. We use the instruction tuning data set collected for llama 2 and described in detail by 2 Ron et al. Honestly, I can stop here. 2.4. This, this is fucking important as shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has actually tried this because uh, everyone should be doing it. <laughs> so, so that, yeah, I mean, why is, why is not, why are people not talking about this? People probably are. I just kind of missed it. Um, What is Merlin? Who the fuck is Merlin? Oh boy. Okay, I guess. All right. Yeah, yeah, these guys are all over it. I just, I didn't pay attention to when Colab was out, I was, I was busy. Wow, Susan.
Okay, let's read Susan's stuff in more detail. Oh, SPM is worse than PSM. SPM, this is like what you think normal is, prefix and middle and then suffix. Uh, and then PSM is the more cursed one because you just randomly cut off tokens. But they're saying here that PSM format and uh, the model does not, uh, so span infilling this arbitrary insertion is a problem because you artificially merge this thing. <laughs> That's so funny. P, uh, I will say something like, uh, it's funny that this is kind of themselves shooting, Sh shooting themselves. Uh, in the foot, the main reason uh, SPM is bad here is because SPM is concatenated. So no surprise, it tr has trouble uh, adding in the special tokens later on. Um, why I do why I do that is Susan Susan used to work at Meta. Uh, she was the lead of the OPT project, uh, and so obviously extremely, extremely uh, knowledgeable on code model training and specifically the way that Facebook does it. So I do like to respond to her on specific things. Uh, one, just to learn. Two, since I'm trying to get to know her better um, and potentially have her as an interview guest. Uh, but let's keep going on her stuff. She's got lots of hot takes. Long context fine tuning in her short context result, and initially objectives can certainly do good benchmarks too. These two benchmarks. Uh -huh. While our models are effective on long sequences, we observe that LCFT slides, <laughs> LCFT, long context fine tuning, so you have performance. In table 10, we observe an average decrease of 0 0.52 percentage points on human eval pass at one. 1.9 points on MVPP for pass at one metric. Similarly, a, point, a breakdown of code completion results in zero seven. Yeah, sure, there's some cost. MBD, friends. MBD. 
No one gives a shit. Yeah, whatever. Training details are interesting. It seems like some instabilities popped up and they just cut it off early. Okay, what the hell? Uh, they use that on W. Cosine schedule. Well, it has batch size of 4 million tokens, 4,936 tokens. Uh -huh. Long context activity. These are linear 35. Seems sketchy. Another interesting part. Increased correlation between languages as model size increases. Breaking the competition barrier. How do they correlate languages? Is that the way to what have you? Still wish overlap analysis were done to formulate sort of claims. Okay, great. You're too nice, Susan. Okay, we are back to reading the paper. To run it all, 2023B. Specifically, we use the version referred to in the paper as RLHFV5, collected trough several stages of reinforcement learning from human feedback and human feedback annotation. See your section three for more details. It combines thousands of supervised fine tuning and millions of rejection sampling examples. Each example consists of a multi turn dialogue between a user and an assistant. For rejection sampling, the output was selected among several generations using a reward model. The final data set contains both helpfulness and safety data. This enables code Llama to inherit Llama 2's instruction following the safety properties. Self uh, I'm just following up on the recent previous discussion. Uh, our previous discussion on whether or not um, instruction fine tuning RHF was was commutative, aka best order matter. There is some evidence in Code Lama that it does. The uh, IFT RLHF step is uh, at the end here when they could have taken it from the Lama to RLHF and point uh, checkpoint or to instruct chat. Checkpoint. Self-instruct. Our proprietary data set contains few examples of code-related tasks. Collecting supervised data from human annotators or training from human feedback. We yang it all. 2022 is expensive for coding tasks as it requires input from professional developers. Instead of human feedback, we use execution feedback to select data to train our instruct model. We construct the self-instruction data set following the recipe below, resulting in tilde operator 14,000 question test solution triplets. 1. Generate 62,000 interview style programming questions by prompting figure 9, llama 270b. 2. To duplicate the set of questions by removing exact duplicates, resulting in tilde operator 52,000 questions. 3. For each of these questions, uh, generate unit tests by prompting code llama 7b, figure 10b. Generate 10 Python solutions by prompting code llama 7b, figure 11c. Run the unit tests on the 10 solutions. Add the first solution that passes the test, along with its corresponding question and tests, to the self-instruct data set. We use code llama 7b to generate the tests in Python solutions, as we found it more efficient than generating fewer solutions per question with a 34b model for the same compute budget. Rehearsal. In order to prevent the model from regressing on general coding and language understanding capabilities, code llama instruct is also trained with a small proportion of data from the code data set, 6%, and our natural language data set, 2%. 2.6. Training details. Optimization. Our optimizer is Adam W. Lashtilab and Hutter, 2019, with beta 1 and beta 2 values of 0 0.9 and 0 0.95. We use a cosine schedule with 1,000 warm-up steps and set the final learning rate to be 1 30th of the peak learning rate. We use a batch size of 4M tokens, which are presented as sequences of 4,096 tokens. We already covered this, so I'm just going to skip it. 96, 524,288 tokens and on approximately 5B tokens in total. 
Long context fine tuning. For long context fine tuning, LCFT, we use a learning rate of 2e minus 5, a sequence length of 16,384, and reset rogue frequencies. First, we evaluate our models on popular descriptions to code generation benchmarks for Python, Human Eval, Chen et al., 2021, MVPP, Austin et al., 2021, and apps, programming interviews and competitions, Hendrix et al., 2021. Second, we evaluate our models on further programming languages using multi PL. That's the same guy that created MMOU. Using multi PLE, Cassandra et al., 2023, namely on C, Java, PHP, C, Sharp, TypeScript, TS, and Bash. We additionally report results on the GSM8K benchmark, Cobb et al., 2021, which measures mathematical reasoning capabilities, Appendix C. Next, we perform an extensive ablation study. I, we study the impact of training from scratch or from a pre-trained LAMA2 model in Section 3.4.1. E, we perform ablations for infilling and additional infilling-specific benchmarks in Section 3.2. E, we study the effect of long-context fine-tuning on perplexity, a synthetic retrieval task, and code completion with long source code files, Section 3.3. And IV, we evaluate our instruction fine-tuning procedure, which includes self-instruct training by leveraging self-generated unit tests in Section 3.4.2. 3.1. Code generation. 3.1.1 Python code generation. We start by reporting results for Python code generation using the human eval, Chen et al., 2021, MVPP, Austin et al., 2021, and apps, Hendrix et al., 2021, benchmarks. Results are summarized in tables 2 and 3. The full list of results on human eval and MVPP, including models with and without infilling and long context fine tuning, can be found in table 10 in Appendix B. We provide zero shot results of our instruction fine tuned models on apps in table 15 with evaluation details in Appendix C. Our main findings are as follows. The value of model specialization. We observe that model specialization is yields a boost in code generation capabilities when comparing Llama 2 to Code Llama and Code Llama to Code Llama Python. Llama 2 was trained on 2T tokens and training on only 500B of extra tokens from a code heavy dataset results in massive performance gains on both human eval and MVPP to the point that Llama 270B is roughly equivalent to Code Llama 7B on Python coding benchmarks. Although Code Llama was trained on more than two epics of our code dataset, which contains our entire Python dataset, training on 100B extra tokens of a Python heavy data mix leads to significant gains on Python code generation benchmarks. That's an important sentence. Uh, Llama 270B is important. Uh, quick pee break. I'll be back. All right, let's power through. I'm definitely feeling tired, but we're having fun. Uh, I think there's really only like 20 pages worth of paper here, so. On Python code generation benchmarks, between 4.3% points and 8.3% points in human eval pass at one, and between 1.2% points and 6.4% points in MVPP pass at one. These gains are smaller than for the first code training step, that still allow code llama python 7b to outperform even code llama 13b on MVPP and human eval. For the apps benchmark, the prompts are much less direct and more complex compared to MVPP and human eval. Our code llama python models show slightly decreased performance on the introductory and interview level problems, where understanding the prompt is often more challenging for a language model than implementing a solution. However, code llama python shows clear gains on competition level problems where solutions are more complex. While large language models have enough capacity to learn to generate text on various topics, we observe that model specialization is beneficial for models between 7b and 34b parameters and after two full epics on the training data. Scaling of specialized models, we observe that scaling the number of parameters matters for models specialized for coding. With the same training process, our larger models outperform their smaller counterparts on almost every metric from human eval, MVPP, and apps, table 2, 3. For instance, we gain 5.6 percentage points on MVPP pass at one scaling code llama from 7b to 13b parameters and 8 more points when scaling to 34b. We can hypothesize that specializing larger models to code will lead to significant further gains on coding tasks. Moreover, the Chinchilla scaling laws, Kaufman et al., 2022, indicate that larger models would benefit more from training on more tokens. 3.1.2 multilingual evaluation next. We evaluate our models on a more diverse set of programming languages. For that, we use them. So they know they're sub Chinchilla. Bigger is better. <laughs> These two sentences are just like, we just, we just need to make everything bigger. For that, we use the multi-PLE benchmark, Cassano et al., 2023. We report results for Python, C++, Java, PHP, TypeScript, C Sharp, and Bash in Table 4. We observe a similar improvement from Llama 2 to Code Llama in a multilingual setting as in the evaluation on Python, Section 3.1.1. The Code Llama models clearly outperform Llama 2 models of the same size. So I do, I do keep track of some benchmarks, and this is a better benchmark for code. Uh, code. T-E-P-L-E benchmark used in code llama paper.
outperformed Llama 2 models of the same size on code generation in any language, and Code Llama 7B even outperforms Llama 2.70B. Compared to other publicly available models, ours are especially strong in the multilingual setting. Code Llama 7B outperforms larger models such as CodeGen Multi or StarCoder, as on par with Codex, Code Cushman 001, Chen et al., 2021. The performance of Code Llama Python is comparable to that of Code Llama. Code Llama Python 30B performs slightly worse than Code Llama, but Code Llama Python 7B and 13B perform slightly better than their counterparts without Python fine-tuning. More detailed results can be found in Table 11, Appendix B, to better understand the influence of multilingual pre-training. We measure the correlations between each of the evaluated languages and report the results separately for different model sizes in Figure 3. We observe high correlation between model performance on C++, C Sharp, Java, and PHP. Interestingly, we also notice strong correlation between model performance on Python and Bash. Lastly, as expected, the bigger and more expressive the models, the higher the correlation between the performance across all different languages. 3.2 infilling evaluations performance cost of infilling training. Previous studies on infilling or filling the middle FIM code models assert that the traditional next token prediction objective can be replaced by a multitask infilling objective with an infilling rate of up to 90% at no cost for left or right autoregressive test losses, Bavarian et al. 2022, and only small cost for downstream evaluation performance, Alal et al. 2023. In Table 5, we independently validate both findings at the scale of 7B and 13B parameters and 500B training tokens of code. The 7B model loses 0.6 percentage points on average across human eval and MVPP pass at 1, pass at 10, and pass at 100 scores if trained with an infilling objective, while the 13B model loses 1.1 percentage points. Because of this modest decline in performance in the wide applicability of models with infilling capability, we decide to release code Llama 7B and 13B in this configuration. Code infilling benchmarks. Our infilling models reach state of the art performances in code infilling benchmarks among models of their size. We evaluate on two related code infilling benchmarks based on the human eval benchmark, Chen et al. 2021. The human eval infilling benchmark, Fried et al. 2023, turns the reference solutions of the human eval benchmark, Chen et al. 2021, into infilling problems by masking out either individual lines or blocks consisting of multiple consecutive lines. It has been extended in Bavarian et al. 2022, with a random span infilling task in which a masking is applied to a randomly selected substring at the character level. Predictions are scored with a pass at one score based on the test cases of the original human eval problems. According to the results in Table 14, our models outperform all other infilling models of their size. Note, however, that the results in random span infilling are significantly worse in suffix prefix middle, SPM format than in prefix suffix middle, PSM format as it would require token healing, Microsoft, 2023, which we have not implemented for this evaluation. See Appendix D for further discussion. The Lal et al. 2023 translates the human eval infilling benchmark to other programming languages using multi PLE, Cassano et al. 2023. Single lines are masked and predictions are scored with an exact match metric against the ground truth solution. Our models, including code Llama 7B, outperform all open infilling models across the three programming languages contained in the benchmark, Table 6. We observe a further increase in performance when prompting the models in SPM format, like witnessed in Bavarian et al. 2022. 3.3 long context evaluations. We explore code Llama's ability to work with long sequences by measuring complexity, key retrieval accuracy, and performance during generation on code completion tasks. This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a with an unapologetic flavor. Backward. That consisting of large source files is greater than or equal to 50 kilobytes. For all model sizes, we observe a steady decrease in complexity well beyond 16,384 tokens, which is the sequence length we use for long context fine tuning. After 100k tokens, the perplexity increases only slightly, in contrast to the well-known instability phenomenon when testing transformer models on sequences larger than those seen during training. Press it all. 2022. Key retrieval. In figure 4b, we investigate key retrieval. All right. What is that paper? Uh, okay, we're on page 11 right now. Training short test long. Uh, well, field press is kind of a goat. Oh, this is a yellow white paper. Nice. We investigate key retrieval performance in synthetic task. The prompt consists of a large amount of syntactically valid Python code with a function returning a scalar inserted at a specified position. The model is asked to complete an assert statement with the return value of the inserted function. Lou et al. 2023b showed that the inability to recall content placed in the middle of long prompts is a common failure mode in LLMs. Our retrieval task is analogous to their setup, albeit tailored to code models which are not fine tuned to follow instructions. All models exhibit strong retrieval performance on the sequence length they were trained on, with the exception of the 7b model for test cases in which the function is placed at the beginning of the prompt. We include OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K0613 as a reference. We query GPT with a system prompt of complete the following code and a temperature of zero. For sequences beyond 16K tokens, i.e., when extrapolating, our models exhibit a decrease in performance. Appendix F3. Single line completion. Finally, we test the benefits of the ability to handle long context sizes in a single line code completion task. Our task is based on the long code completion, LCC benchmark, Quo et al., 2023. To the LCC test set is skewed towards shorter files, and we hence sample a new set of examples from LCC's validation and test set with an equalized distribution over file size, Appendix F2. In Table 7, we compare the completion accuracy of the code Llama models to their counterparts prior to long context fine tuning. Non LCFT models fail to generate meaningful completions on long sequences, and we thus truncate the prompts to the 4,000 tokens immediate preceding line to complete. Across all metrics, models fine tuned to handle long context achieve significantly higher performance. This demonstrates that long contexts are informative for code completion, and that with LCFTR models are able to leverage this information to improve their generations. We note that the longest examples prompt in this test consists of 103K tokens, for which all code Llama models generate syntactically correct completions, with the 7B model producing an exact match. Performance impact on short contexts. While our models are effective on long sequences, we observe that LCFT slightly hurts performance on standard code synthesis benchmarks consisting of short sequences. In Table 10, we observe an average decrease of 0.52 percentage points on human eval pass at 1 and 1. Nine points on MVPP for the pass at one metric. Similarly, the breakdown of the code completion results in Table 7 by the number of tokens in each example shows that for prompts shorter than 4K tokens, long context fine tuning induces a reduction of up to two blue points from base models after code training. Figure 8B. We observe similar decreases in performance for infilling tasks. Table 14. LCFT comes at a cost for short sequences and slightly decreases our scores on standard coding benchmarks such as human eval and MVPP. However, many real-world use cases are not captured by these benchmarks, and we believe that this cost is more than offset by the potential of handling long sequences for real downstream applications. Hence, we opt to release all our code llama, code llama Python, and code llama instruct models with long context capabilities. 3.4. Ablation studies. 3.4.1 fine tuning Llama 2 versus training from scratch on code code Llama is based on the Llama 2 models, which are trained on 2T tokens of text, including only 80B tokens of code. We tune these models on 500B extra tokens, consisting mostly of code, 85%. 
Figure 5A shows the training curves of Code Llama. We compare the 7B parameters model to an identical model trained from scratch on the same data mix, Figure 5B. At the end of training, the loss of the model trained from scratch is equal to the loss of Code Llama 7B at about half of its training, with 240B less training tokens. Moreover, this gap becomes larger over time. 3.4.2 Instruction Fine Tuning General Helpfulness versus Coding Ability. We evaluate Code Llama Instruct and compare it to Llama 2 Chat for coding tasks and helpfulness, Figure 5C. We observe that Code Llama improves its coding abilities for each model sizes, while preserving the general helpfulness performance inherited from Llama 2. The results on the helpfulness axis is an indication that Code Llama performs greatly on general instructions following. But we emphasize that this result should be taken with a grain of salt, since we limited our automatic evaluation to scoring the model's answers with Llama 2 reward model. The value of self-instruct data we also perform ablations, showing the value of the self-instruct data that we generate with our own model. To evaluate the capacity of the model to answer questions, we use a zero-shot version of MVPP. We prompt the model to generate the code between Python and Python tags to make it easy to parse the result. Our exact prompt is shown in Figure 12 in the appendix. Table 8 showed the impact of training on data generated using our models and filtered with unit tests as described in Section 2.5. The self-instruct data allows us to improve our scores on benchmarks such as human eval and MVPP. It also makes the training more reliable. With self-instruct, the model easily learns to follow the format requested for MVPP zero shot while it sometimes fails without it. Unnatural model. For comparison purposes, we also fine-tune code Llama Python 34B on 15,000 unnatural instructions similarly to Honovich et al. 2023, using the same prompts as for the self-instruct dataset. We do not release this model, but we observe clear improvements on human eval and MVPP which are indicative of the improvements that can be reached with a small set of high-quality coding data. The results of the unnatural model are shown in Table 2, 3.4.3. Pass at K evaluation. We study the effect of the sampling temperature on the pass at K performance. Specifically, we report pass at 1, 10, and 100 using temperature element of 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 on both human eval and MVPP. Results are depicted in Figure 6. As expected, as we increase the temperature, the pass at 1 scores are getting worse while the pass at 1, 0 and pass at 1, 0 oh, improve. Four responsible AI and safety large language models have been shown to have the potential to produce known falsehoods due to misconceptions or false beliefs. Lean at all. 2022. Generate toxic or offensive content. Parkinson at all. 2022. And reproduce or even amplify the biases that are contained in the training data. Domino at all. 2021. As mentioned in section 2.5, we make code llama instruct safer by fine-tuning on outputs from llama 2, including adversarial prompts with safe responses, as well as prompts addressing code specific risks. In this section, we perform evaluations on three widely used automatic safety benchmarks from the perspectives of truthfulness, toxicity, and bias, respectively. Specifically, we assess the safety capabilities of both pre-trained code llama and fine-tuned code llama instruct with Falcon, Almazur Lee et al., 2023, MPT, Mosaic ML, 2023, and Starcoder, Lee et al., 2023. We complement the safety analysis of Code Llama Instruct with additional red teaming from various domain experts in offensive security, malware development, responsible AI and software engineering, similar to Tubron et al. 2023B. Truthfulness. We use truthful. Basically saying it's not our job, which is running through the gauntlet like everyone else does. We utilize GPT-3-based metrics following Lin et al. 2022 to determine the truthfulness and informativeness of the outputs. For the QA prompt, we use a few-shot prompt containing six random QA pairs, structured according to the Instruct GPT format, Yang et al. 2022. The results are reported as the percentage of generations that are both truthful and informative, as well as the percentage that are either truthful or informative. Toxicity. We use Toxigen. Harvard where a positive negative score indicates a positive negative sentiment towards the population mentioned in the prompt. A score closer to zero indicates a neutral sentiment. Benchmark evaluation results. Table 9 shows the evaluation results of the three safety benchmarks. We follow the decoding setting as in 2RON et al. 2023B, where a temperature of 0.1 and top P of 0.9 are used. Regarding truthful QA, we provide the percentage of generations that are both truthful and informative, where a higher percentage indicates better performance. Regarding the groups in bold, more detailed results split by different demographic groups can be found in Appendix H red teaming. It is important to also proactively identify risks with adversarial testing or red teaming. We conducted three red teaming exercises with 25 men employees, including domain experts in responsible AI, malware development, and offensive security engineering. The red teamers provided a nuanced evaluation specifically on the risk from so-called dual intent prompts. Dual intent prompts are requests for help with writing code that could be used maliciously, but the prompt does not directly address the topic. Example, Mosaic prompts Blue Prop et al. 2023. For example, the model rightfully refuses to provide support with writing ransomware code, but it complies when asked to provide a script to encrypt all files in the user's home directory since such a script could be used for benign purposes. After conducting red team exercises, we asked participants who had also participated in Llama 2 chat exercises to also provide qualitative assessment of safety capabilities of the model. Some participants who had expertise in offensive security and malware development questioned the ultimate risk posed by malicious code generation through LLMs with current capabilities. One red team remarked, while LLMs being able to iteratively improve on produced source code is a risk, producing source code isn't the actual gap. That said, LLMs may be risky because they can inform low-skill adversaries in production of scripts through iteration that performs some malicious behavior. According to another red teamer, the area scripts, program code, and compiled binaries are readily available on mainstream public websites, hacking forums, or on the dark web. Advanced malware development is beyond the current capabilities of available LLMs, and even an advanced LLM paired with an expert malware developer is not particularly useful as the barrier is not typically writing the malware code itself. That said, these LLMs may produce code which will get easily caught if used directly. In addition to red teaming sessions, we ran a quantitative evaluation on risk from generating malicious code by scoring code llama's responses to ChatGPT's GPT-3. Observe that code llama tends to answer with safer responses. The distribution. We show some examples in Appendix Table 14. This behavior is something we plan to investigate in more details in the future. Safety and coding performance. As our instruction fine tuning set prioritizes safety, longer fine tunings tend to degrade coding performance. We trained our models to reach high coding performances while not compromising on safety. As shown in Figure 7, our code llama instruct models are safer than ChatGPT. 5. Related work, early observations with LLMs such as GPT Neo, Black et al., 2021, or GPTJ, Wong and Komatsu 2021, show that adding code in the training data makes program synthesis possible even with medium sized LLMs. Code from open source software is now a standard part of the trip. Wong et al., 2021, Encoder, Fried et al., 2023, Alpha Code, Lee et al., 2022, Cogen, Nikamp et al., 2023B, and Cogen 2, Nikamp et al., 2023A, GPT Neox, Black et al., 2022, Santa Coder, Alal et al., 2023, Star Coder, Lee et al., 2023, and Phi 1, Gunnisucker et al., 2023, consistently demonstrating better performance on code benchmarks than general purpose LLMs of comparable or even larger size. This paper follows this line by fine tuning the recent general purpose language model Llama 2 on code data. Closed source versus open source models. The landscape of LLMs is marked by whether the technology is free, licensed for commercial use, to run it, commercial use of the models under the same terms as Llama 2. Panetto et al., 2023, and this is also true for code, filter data up to only containing textbook quality code and add synthetic problems collected using GPT-3. 5. Following Jung et al., 2023, in order to obtain good performance on simple benchmarks such as human eval and MVPP, we follow the approach of learning from publicly available code only, without additional meta-level or temporal information such as issues or commits. We also do not train our fo
2023, many tasks related to code understanding or synthesis have been addressed since the early 2020s with NLP model. 2022, at Predator et al. 2022, fixing build errors, Parlo et al. 2020, or generating unit tests, to Fundo et al. 2020, Lee et al. 2022, Chen et al. 2023A, as well as solving math problems as demonstrated by Palm, Chowdhury et al. 2022, our codex, Chen et al. 2021, 14 code understanding tasks are represented in the codex Blue benchmark, Lu et al. 2021. Here we focus on the main problem of program synthesis, as well as infilling completion for our 7B and 13B models where the ability comes with little impact on the generation performance as previously observed by Bavarian et al. 2022. Additional modifications to LLM training and inference. A number of works proposed to incorporate within the training objective structural knowledge of programs with specialized objectives for code deobfuscation. Le Show et al. 2021. Contrastive learning through semantic preserving code transformations. Jane et al. 2021. Leveraging abstract syntax trees to learn tree aware positional encodings. Shiv and Quirk. 2019. Hung et al. 2021. A recent stream of work takes into account program execution or unit tests to filter, cluster, or improve the correctness of programs when few candidates must be submitted. Lee et al. 2022. Chen et al. 2023A. Lei et al. 2022. Zhang et al. 2023, or unit test them within a reinforcement learning objective to enrich the training signal. Lei et al. 2022. Lu et al. 2023A. We focus here on improving the base model rather than tweaking the inference scheme, since we believe this is where most of the long-term progress comes from. It is nonetheless an interesting direction to experiment with more elaborated inference schemes on top of code llama. Long sequences in LLMs, scaling transformers in LLMs to long input sequences has attracted much recent interest. Dai et al. 2019. Delta G et al. 2020. Yu et al. 2023. Ding et al. 2023. The context length supported by available models and APIs has seen a steady increase, with Starcoder being trained on 8K token sequences, Li et al. 2023, up from the 4K of the law et al. 2023, recent GPT versions supporting 16K, GPT 3.5 Turbo minus 16K, and 32K tokens, GPT 4 to 32K, MPT 7B fine tuned on 65K tokens, Mosaic ML, 2023, and Claude featuring 100K context windows, Anthropic, 2023. Previous research focuses on alleviating the O, N2, space and time complexity of self-attention, the Swami et al. 2017, by introducing sparsity patterns, as well as by encoding positional information in such a way that models can leverage input sizes larger than those presented at training time, length extrapolation. In our work, we do not rely on hand uh, sparsity yeah. patterns such as those proposed for code input by Guo et al. 2023, who operate on sequences of up to 4096 tokens as to not curtail the model's expressivity and modify the encoding of positions instead. Starting from pre-trained Llama 2 models that utilize Rope, Su et al., 2021, Chen et al., 2023b, propose additional fine-tuning for long sequence handling, an approach we pursue as well. However, we tailor our hyperparameter modifications to allow for extrapolation at inference time. Our modification of the Rope hyperparameters, Su et al., 2021, is a simple modification which does not require any architectural changes or restrictions and can be readily applied to existing implementations. Free Press et al., 2022, propose a linear bias for attacking extrapolation. In contrast, our approach seeks to reduce existing bias toward short range attention. Recent work suggests that causal models do not require an explicit encoding of position information. Aviv et al., 2022, Kazemjad et al., 2023, a hypothesis we did not test in this work as we demonstrated that starting from pre-trained Llama 2 models is significantly more efficient than training from scratch. Six. Discussion. We release a family of code specialized Llama 2 models called Code Llama, with three main variants that we release with three sizes, 7B, 13B, and 34B parameters, Code Llama, Code Llama Python, Code Llama Instruct. With real-world applications in mind, we trained our 7B and 13B models to support infilling and all our models to leverage large contexts. We tested their stability and inference up to 100K tokens, Figure 4A. Large context fine-tuning and infilling come at a cost on standard benchmarks left to right code generation benchmarks, Table 10, that are all based on short sequences, i.e. function level. Still, our 30B model is state-of-the-art among public models on standard Python completion benchmarks, and our other models are competitive compared to models with similar numbers of parameters. On multilingual benchmarks, even our smallest model, Code Llama 7B, outperforms every other public model. The Code Llama Instruct models are trained to provide zero-shot instruction ability to Code Llama. In this further fine-tuning, where we somewhat distillate Llama 2 chat, we focus not only on being more directly helpful, Figure 5C, but also sought to provide a safer model to use and deploy, Section 4. Following instruction and being overly safe can cost some points on evaluations, e.g. on human eval for the 34B model in Table 2, as exemplified in Figure 14. Further work is needed for LLMs to understand context and nuance in their instructions. That was it for the paper. Learn the parameters. Um, definitely ran out of steam towards the end, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, look, like a fair amount of good detail, but the high-level takeaways are still the same. It's what they released. It was better. Um, there's this like fine tuning process in here. I mean, it could be like a nine page paper, and we all be fine with it. Um, yeah. So that is it. That's two papers in the bag that we read. Uh, I would say this is kind of semi reflective of what I try to do. Uh, this is definitely a longer session. I don't think I usually last more than an hour because it's definitely a lot of thinking and researching. But um, you learn so much because this is. This is the root source of the documents. Uh, Code Lama has a GitHub. You can probably go check out and learn a lot more from um, all useful, useful stuff. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out. And all the best. <laughs>